Welcome. My name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a circular landscape that is going to be implemented into a cube map. Uh, first of all we create a disk. I activate display guru shading to see the lines better. And I use the orange handles to make the disk a circular shape. Let's try out different numbers. And we use enough subdivisions to get a little squares in there. This is going to be our mountains and I use a displacer deformer underneath the disk object to create mountains using a noise in the shading tab. The noise will have a fall, fall off. I use torus so that way I can define the area of influence for my deformer. Using the radius, I can make sure that in uh, close to the center there is hardly any effect so that the inner borders are flat. All the other parts are going to be deformed using intensity only, so that way it only goes up but you can see in the center the ring remains on the floor. Now I use some clipping in the noise so that I only get a few mountains and I use the FBM noise because it gives me a more believable result I think. Now let's redefine the noise a little using even more low clipping. So that's what I mean with a few mountains. Next there is the landscape object and I use this only as a floor. It gets around about the size of our ring. I disable borders at sea level, so now I make it a little taller, so we have some little uh, hills, if you like. And I try to give it the correct position, so that it doesn't intersect too much with the mountains. Now I set up a camera right in the center using 0, 0, 0 for radius and 0, 10, 0 for position. I have to redefine this a little, uh, the landscape object, so we don't get any clipping issues. And I move the mountain side downwards a little. This is not about precision. Next. Uh, I use the physical sky to get a sky background quickly. I disable the HUD to get the green stuff out of the way. And this would be my first rendering. Next I create a material without specular but with a displacement channel. And within the displacement I use noise again to use sub-polygon displacement using a few subdivisions. Um, and now if we um, define this further, we can use a kind of macro structure. I use electric here because it looks a bit like a rock. And I drag and drop it on top of the disk object. So now when you render it, you have a more complex structure right away. Now you can take the, your time to redefine the looks of it. I 
I just change the viewing angle to see what it looks like when the sun comes from the side. And play around with the type, so intensity looks better, I think. Now I enable atmosphere and clouds to get a more realistic look. I'm not so sure about sunbeams and fog, but I wanted to try them out. And the most important thing, in my opinion, is the clouds, if you want to have them. And of course atmosphere, because that way you get some hazing in the distance. Now I scale the landscape up a little and you see that everything is connected with everything else. So if, if you change the size of the mountains, you have to recalculate or rethink about um, the displacement. You can see it's almost gone here. So, but now we see the fog. That's the pinkish line close to the floor. Now let's give it some more segments, just for the looks of it. There's loads of options you could touch in that setup. I made the hills on the ground a bit more obvious. Next we have to get the displacement structure back in. I just increase the height and the effect gets more visible again. Despite little issues, I am happy with that setup. And next I want to get the atmosphere a bit closer so the hills are um, getting more faded away this is the extreme version of it just for trying and now we, we reduce the scale again Now you can tell we lo lowered the contrast. Just to show it, you can change the date to get a different lighting situation rather quickly. Make sure you have a look at it from a different angle as well. And this is uh, the whole scene. I center the camera again. And call it front. Let's dive into the camera. And yeah, you can tell there are still some issues that are can be easily fixed by repositioning the camera a little in height. And let's just disable the landscape to see the camera better. And this would be the first camera that is creating the first image for our cube map. And now we copy paste the camera around. 
and I gonna rename the other cameras to left, right and back. And you turn them around by 90 degrees, holding down shift while using the green, um, the green band. You can make sure it is using 10 degree steps, so that way our cameras are perfectly positioned. Same with the cameras for top and bottom. Just copy paste the front camera and turn it up or down using the red band. Now let's turn around this and you can see everything is rotated perfectly in 90 degrees and now I set the resolution of our rendering to 512 pixels so that way my resulting images are a perfect square. Now set the field of view to 90 degrees so the cameras all together film the whole scene around them. Now I put the physical sky back to January because it was just a warmer color and now I check all the cameras by diving into them, clicking on that little crosshair that's up and that's downwards. And basically the next step is to render out some image. The render settings are okay, we can increase the anti-aliasing to one by one, two by two, but that shouldn't bother you too much. That's the first image we have. I zoom in because just to show you we have some issues here but you can fix them if you like or you can yeah, Photoshop them. Or I don't care about this too much right now for our tutorial. That's the front image. Now I slide over to left. Now I slide over to right. Render it. Go to back. Render it. And you can see it looks quite beautiful. Alright, that's the six images. And now let's just rename them. Same names the cameras have. I delete the first test image. And now let's save down all those images using their name .png in my case. Once you saved all those images, you can go over to Unity and if you don't have one yet, you create a camera and a new material which I call Cinema Sky or so. That cinema sky can be set to a shader that is called Skybox. And now I just go to my folder called Skybox and drag and drop the whole folder into my assets. In Unity 3D now we can um, just drag and drop our images into uh, the fields for the Skybox shader. You have to lock the shader, of course. Click on that little icon in your inspector that shows a lock, so that way you can drag and drop um, your skybox images easily. Now I click on the camera, and to see the camera I have to click again here on the little icon. I clicked on that before. And I add a component that is called rendering skybox. And now it's expecting my skybox material and you can see it works but I made a little mistake I confused left and right images so now I go back click on the little lock icon here go back to my images folder and drag the left inside what's called right here and the right inside the left one now this looks rather good
that was the unity part. And next we look at a cube map in general with up, back, left, front, right and down images applied in that manner. We can do the same because other game engines or 3D engines might expect a cube map uh, with all images in one file. So I just use the given file, the first one, and increase the width to 400% in one direction and to 300% in top. So that way my first image is placed on a rather big canvas. Yeah, that was it. And now I just drag and drop all the other files in and yeah, just position them the way they belong. That's the panorama. This guy must be placed right on top. So there's no seam visible. That's the correct position. And despite the fact this works, it's not a cross. So I just quickly have to reposition my tiles to make them look good. Now let's play a little puzzle game. Still not perfect. And there we go. That's a cube map you can save down from Photoshop.